my desire, if not my duty, to try to talk to you journeymen with some candor about what is happening to radio and television. And if what I say is responsible, I alone am responsible for the saying of it. Our history will be what we make of it. And if there are any historians about 50 or 100 years from now, and there should be preserved the kinescopes of one week of all three networks, they will there find, recorded in black and white and in color, evidence of decadence, escapism, and insulation from the realities of the world in which we live. It opens a valve and it lets air through the pipe. So it's a constant volume for that pipe. So the swell shutter pedal, which is controlled by the feet and it's right above the pedal board where I play the notes with my feet. And as I push the pedal forward, the swell shutters will open. And as I slowly push it closed, the swell shutters will close. And so it's connected by electric wire from my foot all the way up to the top of the swell box to open and close the shutters. So the stop tabs on the organ each tell me what family and what the size of the pipe is. So there's eight foot flutes and 16 foot flutes and four foot reeds. And so I know what to turn on for what sound that I want. And the more of those that I have down, the louder the sound is gonna be because the more pipes I have playing together. And the fewer is when you get the purity of an individual sound. And so the organ has these great big chests that fill with air and they're waiting for me to, to press these notes. And then they activate and as I hit the keys, all of these things open up and it just lets this air rush out into the pipes. Secrets from the Great Pyramid of Giza continue to unfold as scientists discover we can focus electromagnetic energy through its hidden chambers. RT's Trinity Chavez explains. 
built by the ancient Egyptians more than 4,500 years ago, the ancient Pyramid of Giza is the oldest of the seven wonders of the ancient world. But scientists are becoming more and more astonished as they make new discoveries about this mysterious landmark. Archaeologists in Egypt have stumbled upon a new discovery. They found that its shape focuses electromagnetic energy, such as radio waves, through its hidden chambers and under its base. Its ability to concentrate electric and magnetic energy was discovered by an international team of researchers. Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla are two different types of inventors. Edison really was a businessman at heart. You really had to dig into the nuts and bolts of whatever it was you were inventing so that you could make it into a commercial, marketable product. Edison's breakthrough was to conceive of this as not just the light bulb, but as a system. Nikola Tesla has developed technologies for the transmission of alternating current electricity, which brought electrical power to households. He brought to light wireless communication information, which is part of the foundation for how we communicate on a global basis now today. Welcome to a new Happy Learning video. Today, we're going to talk about some animals that existed 65 million years ago. I am sure you have heard about the dinosaurs. And I'm certain you have seen them in many films and cartoons featuring dinosaurs. But not everything that is told in these films is correct. So if you don't mind, let's find out what they are really like and how they lived. The first thing we need to understand is that people and dinosaurs never lived together. The dinosaurs lived before human beings existed and they roamed the earth for approximately 135 million years. That's a really long time. They were the dominating vertebrates. Nowadays, more than 500 different species have been identified thanks to bones and fossils found. All dinosaurs were oviparous, meaning they reproduced by laying eggs. But there were huge differences between them. Some were very small, while others were absolutely enormous. Who was the better inventor, Thomas Edison or Nikola Tesla, and why? The better inventor was hands down Edison. He had so many patents and inventions. Our best hope for induction and wireless charging is Nikola Tesla, and I hope that'll be the way of the future. I'm on Edison's team. I am on team Tesla. Edison, Edison rocks. rocks! I'm on team Nikola Tesla. Tesla, Edison, I mean, it's a great question. When you look at innovation and you look at competition and you look at rivalries, I think it is that type of um, competitive spirit that drives us forward. Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla are two different types of inventors. Edison really was a businessman at heart. You really had to dig into the nuts and bolts of whatever it was you were inventing so that you could make it into a commercial, marketable product. Edison's breakthrough was to conceive of this as not just the light bulb, but as a system. Nikola Tesla has developed technologies for the transmission of alternating current electricity, which brought electrical power to households. He brought to light wireless communication information, which is part of the foundation for how we communicate on a global basis now today. I like both Edison and Tesla. I think they were pretty fantastic scientists and inventors. I suspect because there's controversy, they must be pretty close to equal. 
um, and that's exciting. A lot of people want to know who was the better inventor, Thomas Edison or Nikola Tesla. And I have to say neither one because they were so different as inventors. Tesla and Edison, they're just both great inventors in the energy space. And what we're seeing sort of in lighting and electric motors is just another. Oh, oh.